capital of Latvia, a Hanseatic city and European capital of culture. A young, old town, whose second life has only just begun. The St. Petri Church is one of the oldest in the center of the city and at the same time a main landmark. The church and its tower have a long and varied history. It features inner cross vaults modeled on those of the dome of the Hanseatic city of Lübeck's cathedral, plus a circular arch and sturdy red brick walls. It is one of the most important sacred buildings of the Middle Ages, and it's closely linked with the development of the city. Petri Church has been at the center of various conflicts between the military order of the Livonian Brothers of the Sword and the local population. In 1666, its tower collapsed, buried eight people, and in 1721, lightning destroyed it completely. Tsar Peter the Great had it rebuilt, 127 meters high and with a wonderful view. Next to it is the Schwarzhaupter building in all of its Renaissance glory, a great sight from the past. It was once the home of an influential guild which mainly consisted of unmarried merchants who had attained great wealth. Their patron was Saint Mauritius of Africa. The neighboring Reutern House was one of the city's earliest fine buildings. Menzendorf House was a manorial property which German merchants had built at the end of the 17th century. Carefully renovated, its original splendor has been fully restored along with its splendid ceilings. Living rooms and business areas are decorated with authentic furniture, paintings and other everyday objects. The second floor contains Rococo paintings with motifs created by Antoine Wadeau and painted by a Riga artist of the 8th century. The middle-class buildings of Elizabeth and Albert Street indicate the prosperity of its past occupants. Although varied in design, the magnificent facades were created at the same time. Like almost nowhere else, Art Nouveau has been preserved incredibly well here, with lavish embellishments and numerous motifs. Riga is rightly known as the metropolis of Art Nouveau.
At the turn of the 20th century, a stormy construction boom began. And even today, the city boasts around 800 Art Nouveau buildings. The famous architects and artists of that time created the city's historical buildings with their stylized Renaissance gables, balconies and bay windows. Various folk art motifs vie with Latvian Romanticism in a most unique way. In 1234, the Dominicans founded a monastery and its monks built St. John's Church to commemorate St. John the Baptist. In the 15th century, the building was destroyed during hostilities and was subsequently rebuilt in late Gothic style with a net vault. Later, the Latvians of Riga took over, extended the church and renovated it according to mannerism design. The Baroque altar is relatively plain, and playful angels seem to point to a gable painting. Both John the Baptist and Salome frame the crucified Jesus as a sign of infinite grief and love. The opera is the national sanctuary of the Latvians. It is lovingly referred to as the White House. Its facade is reminiscent of an ancient Greek temple. From 1860, it was developed as a German theatre, based upon a design by Ludwig Bonstedt. At first, it looks like a castle, but it is actually guild buildings. Guilds were originally cooperatives made up of craftsmen and later the general population. They supported members in need and took care of social issues. In the middle of the 14th century, the merchants seceded from the Crafts Guild. In 1354, they formed their own, the Marian Guild. Here, the Cat's House was created. A wealthy businessman was annoyed by the arrogance of the Great Guild. Its members didn't want to admit him, and so he positioned cats to stretch their rumps in the direction of the Guild's buildings. Marian Cathedral is situated in the center of the city and is the most important religious building in the Baltic states. Its age, dimensions and contrasting architectural styles bear witness to a long history. The famous organ built in 1883 contains 124 registers and 6,718 wooden and metal pipes. Various international soloists perform here. Originally, this was the cathedral of the Catholic Archbishop of Riga and following the Reformation became an Evangelical Lutheran Church. Music 
It was modeled on the cathedral of the Hanseatic city of Lübeck, which was well known to the bishop and his crusaders. In 1254, Pope Innocent VI appealed to all believers in and around Riga to contribute to the financing of the cathedral. The story of the Swedish gate is interesting. In 1689, the gate apparently malfunctioned and could not be unlocked. According to legend, Tsar Peter I was forced to wait in front of the locked gate. The truth is that the guards did not want to let him in because of the late hour. The well-preserved powder tower is the largest tower of the old fortress system. Up until the 17th century, it guarded the Sandy Street Gate, the main entrance to the city. A number of cannons and a solid city wall protected Riga during a siege by the Swedes. These three buildings, Trisbrali, the three brothers, were named thus as they were attached to one another. The oldest, the White House, dates back to the 15th century, the other two from the 17th. In the 14th and 15th centuries, the Order Castle was located here. Now no more. In the 16th century, the castle was given its present appearance with its impressive twin white defensive towers. A boat trip on the Dagova River helps to recall the city's history. Here the Vikings docked, embarking on their notorious raids and various other ventures. It was also an important step for the northern people of the Orient. Later, German merchants had their warehouses built here. Where today is the highest television tower in Europe, the Latvians strive to fight for their independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. The country has frequently been occupied by the Crusaders, the Teutonic Order, the Swedes, and finally the Tsars. However, those who invaded often introduced culture and wealth. Consequently, the city grew and blossomed. Three main forces affected the development of Riga. The spiritual power of the bishopric, the military might of the order, and the bourgeois society of craftsmen and merchants. Beyond Powder Tower is a splendid area with much greenery and waterways.
It is the result of the demolition of several buildings and walls that took place in 1856. The work lasted more than six years. Today, the park's history is no longer to be seen. Modern art amid the trees and tiny watercourses that seem to spring from nowhere. A precious paradise on the edge of the old town. And a scattering of ancient wall fragments. On the other side of the canal is the most important national monument of modern times. The Liberty Memorial is a symbol of the unity of the country and of the city's independence. Each hour, the Guard of Honor changes a time-honored ritual. The attainment of independence was for centuries the aim of the freedom-loving Latvians. However, independence took a long time to come and they had to fight hard for it. But it was well worth the effort. Today, Latvia is a free member state of the European Union. The famous Laima Watch is located in the pedestrian zone, at the point where four roads intersect. Constructed in 1924, it's still one of the most popular meeting places in the city. Next to the cathedral is Liven Square with its beer garden framed by guild houses. It's a popular meeting place with medieval surroundings and a drink of noble barley juice. A nostalgic tram leads to the edge of the city. The carriage travels bumpily through the city's alleys and feels like it must have felt in bygone days. The tram car is made of wood open at the front and rear with simple doors and lots of fresh air. The buildings disappear and the tracks end in countryside. This is the Brother Cemetery, of great importance to Latvia's history. Here rest around 2,000 Latvian victims of the First World War and the wars of national liberation. A veil of tranquil greenery covers this revered place. Mm. 
Next, the Open Air Museum of Folk Culture. Built in 1924, it's one of the oldest open air museums in Europe. From each of Latvia's regions, dwelling houses, churches, and windmills have been reassembled here with furniture and everyday objects. Situated on the picturesque shores of Lake Juglas, the museum recalls the daily life of Latvia's farmers, craftsmen and fishermen. Life was hard and many were ordered into forced labour. This was mainly due to Baltic Germans who had conquered the country in the 12th century Crusades. Men worked for daily survival and to nourish their children. The 90 hectare site contains completely rebuilt settlements such as that of Zemgale, with middle class buildings and farms. There's a fine collection of tools. The museum's motto is all Latvia in one day. Jomala is located by the sea. An excursion to the Latvian Riviera is a must on any visit to Riga. Here, former fishing villages were transformed into spa resorts in the 19th century and spa buildings and bathing pavilions were built. Spacious parking facilities accompany kilometers of beaches along with popular pedestrian zones. and a good selection of restaurants and hotels. At the end of the 19th century, more than 2,000 villas and wooden datches were built here. Its reputation as an exclusive seaside resort quickly spread around the world. Both Baltic and Russian nobility discovered its spacious beaches. Yomala was a hit. In the summer months, it could become very crowded and therefore very noisy. There's much Russian spoken here too. But the nostalgic architecture of its beach buildings has been well preserved and maintained, thanks to local government conservation. In keeping with the age-old traditions of the Hanseatic League, the very heart of the Baltic beats within Latvia's metropolis. And also with an elegant lust for life, Riga is an extraordinary treasure.